Whenever you discover water on another planet, the first thing you think of is life. How could there not be extensive life in that big ocean? That ocean contains more water than the Pacific, despite the fact that Ganymede is smaller than the Earth. For centuries, people have admired Earth's beauty and abundance of life. With new technologies and endless curiosity, we're on the brink of a new space age, making us wonder what lies ahead. Is there a world up there that's even more incredible than what we imagine? Join us as we explore the planet we just discovered that is better than Earth. The search for humanity's next home. Amid concerns about global warming, climate change, pandemics, and natural disasters, many scientists fear that Earth's condition is getting worse. They worry that humanity's days here are numbered, and a tragic event could spell our end. In response, scientists are searching the universe for a new planet that could serve as our next home, much like Earth. Originally, scientists aimed to find a planet in our solar system suitable for human habitation. This curiosity drove them to explore planets in our solar system during the mid to late 1900s. Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus were the main targets, as they seemed the most promising. However, further exploration revealed that none of these planets were suitable for human life. Jupiter has stormy weather and a disorganized atmosphere. Saturn's atmosphere is rich in hydrogen and experiences helium rain. Uranus lacks oxygen in its atmosphere, making it uninhabitable for humans. The closest option for human habitation so far is Mars, even though it's a barren, dusty world with frequent dust storms and high radiation levels. Despite these challenges, experts are optimistic about the possibility of making Mars suitable for human life. There are ongoing efforts to establish a human settlement on Mars shortly. However, creating a habitable environment on Mars will be incredibly difficult. It would require creating Earth-like conditions such as oxygen, gravity, water, temperature, and air pressure. Achieving this goal would demand vast financial resources, likely in the billions or even trillions of dollars. Ultimately, it might be much simpler to discover a planet elsewhere in the universe that naturally possesses the ideal conditions for human habitation, rather than attempting to transform an inhospitable planet like Mars into a habitable one. To find a potential replacement for Earth, Scientists are exploring both nearby and distant regions of the universe. They're searching for planets that closely resemble Earth, or perhaps even surpass it in habitability. To simplify this quest, scientists have developed a tool called the Earth Similarity Index. The Earth Similarity Index was proposed by Schulze Makuch in a journal called Astrobiology back in 2011. Today, we use these indices to assign a numerical value to planets, moons, or dwarf planets, indicating their similarity to Earth and their potential for hosting life. This index assesses various factors like temperature and atmospheric pressure to determine how closely a planet resembles Earth and its ability to support life. The index scale ranges from 0.0 to 1.0, a higher score indicates a planet that closely resembles Earth. For instance, a planet with a similarity index of 0.9 is remarkably similar to Earth. Thanks to advancements in technology, scientists have delved deeper into the cosmos and discovered promising possibilities for habitable planets. Astronomers have identified exoplanets and moons that share remarkable similarities with Earth. An exoplanet is a planet that doesn't orbit our Sun, Instead, most of them orbit other stars, while some wander alone in the space between stars. These exoplanets are incredibly far away, too distant for us to send space probes to explore them directly. However, we study them using telescopes on Earth and in space, which can observe these distant planets from our solar system. Exoplanets are abundant in the universe. From observations, we've learned that there are more planets than stars. Just within our galaxy, the Milky Way, there are billions of planetary systems, each with its own set of exoplanets. And beyond our galaxy, there are countless more exoplanets. In short, exoplanets are abundant throughout the cosmos. Exoplanets exhibit a wide range of characteristics, with some having atmospheres that we can analyze. Many exoplanets are vastly different from Earth, 
displaying diverse features such as oceans of lava or rainy glass surfaces. When we study the arrangement of exoplanet systems, we often find unique setup, unlike our solar system. Studying exoplanets helps us understand what makes a planet habitable for life, which is a crucial area of interest. We're particularly interested in planets that resemble Earth in size, composition, and distance from their stars, as these factors influence habitability. Although observing exoplanets from afar is challenging, it fuels our curiosity and drives us to explore and learn more about these distant worlds. In the 1990s, scientists discovered the first exoplanets. Since then, they've uncovered thousands more. They're not just stopping there, they're delving deeper into understanding these exoplanets. Scientists are studying their atmospheres, some are even creating weather maps for them. By surveying exoplanets, scientists aim to grasp the diversity among them. The more we uncover, the more our curiosity grows, compelling us to explore further into the realms of exoplanets, these planets beyond our solar system. One notable discovery is a planet called Tea Garden B, found in 2019. Situated approximately 12.4 light years away from Earth, it closely resembles our planet in terms of mass, weighing about 1.05 times the mass of Earth. T Garden B orbits an M-type star named T Garden, which belongs to the category of red dwarf stars. These stars, known for their cooler temperatures, have surfaces measuring less than 3,600 Kelvin. The T Garden star is about 10 times less massive than our Sun, with a temperature of approximately 2,700 degrees. Even though the red dwarf star appears cool, it still manages to warm up its two planets, T Garden B and C. T Garden B circles its star from a distance of 0.2252 astronomical units. Meanwhile, T Garden C, the other planet in this system, is closer, orbiting at only 0.04 astronomical units. It completes one full orbit in just 11 days. Surprisingly, both planets share similarities with Earth reflecting familiar conditions. What's interesting is that they're both located in the habitable zone of their star, where conditions might support life. Unveiling the Mysteries of Red Dwarf Stars Dwarf stars are a special group of stars that have either average or low levels of brightness, mass, and size. Within this group, there are different types of dwarf stars, each with its characteristics. Some of these types include white dwarfs, red dwarfs, and main sequence stars, like our Sun, which are also considered dwarf stars. These stars display a wide range of colors, from red to blue, based on how hot their outer layers are. Their temperatures can vary greatly, reaching over 10,000 Kelvin in some cases, or dropping to just a few thousand Kelvins in others. Red dwarfs, the tiniest stars in the vast expanse of space, are fascinating celestial bodies. They possess only about 7 to 50% of the mass of our Sun, making them relatively small in comparison. To put it into perspective, they're not much bigger than our planet Jupiter, which is already quite massive. Despite their small size, these stars emit a very dim light, making them impossible to see with the naked eye. You've never caught a glimpse of one in the night sky, as even with all our advanced technology, we can only clearly observe red dwarfs in our neighborhood. Remarkably, about 20 out of the 30 stars closest to Earth are red dwarfs. Like all stars, red dwarfs engage in the process of fusion, converting hydrogen into helium. However, unlike more massive stars that accumulate all the fused helium in their cores, red dwarfs remain convective. This means that the helium and hydrogen constantly mix within them, resulting in an incredibly slow consumption of fuel. Red dwarfs burn so slowly that their average lifespan spans between 1 and 10 trillion years. In comparison, our Sun, with approximately 5 billion years left in its life, seems rather short-lived. None of the trillions of red dwarfs in existence have reached the later stages of development. They are all, in essence, still infants in the cosmic sense. Interestingly, the smallest star in the entire universe is also a red dwarf. This is because small red dwarfs are on the point of becoming stars at all. Just a tiny bit less hydrogen, and they would be mere brown dwarfs, 
failed stars incapable of sustaining a fusion reaction for long. Considering the eventual demise of our sun, humanity may need to seek a new home in the distant future. In our search for habitable planets, we may encounter aliens. The Kepler Space Observatory has revealed that at least half of all red dwarfs host rocky planets within their orbit, many of which are in the habitable zone. However, due to the relatively cold temperatures of red dwarfs, a habitable planet would need to be very close to its star, potentially causing significant challenges for life to flourish. Despite these challenges, the gravitational forces of a red dwarf could create a planet with enough heat to sustain life, although the risk of losing all its water over time remains a concern. Additionally, variations in energy output from red dwarfs, such as star spots and solar flares, pose further obstacles to the development of life. However, the long lifespan of red dwarfs presents amazing possibilities for the evolution of life on their planets. While life on Earth has existed for about 4 billion years, red dwarfs offer the potential for civilizations to thrive for trillions of years. With an estimated 60 billion potentially habitable planets around red dwarfs in the Milky Way alone, these stars may indeed become crucial for our survival in the future. Ultimately, even red dwarfs will meet their end. After a red dwarf's life cycle ends, it will enter an intermediate stage called a blue dwarf. The big change is that it will become much hotter and brighter. Its temperature will rise to around 7,000 degrees Kelvin, and it will stay like this for about 5 billion years. Once a blue dwarf runs out of hydrogen fuel, it will transform into a white dwarf. White dwarfs, sometimes called degenerate stars, are what's left after a star dies. They're incredibly dense and made up of electron degenerate matter. Despite being as heavy as the sun, they're squeezed into a space about the size of Earth. While they don't produce nuclear reactions anymore, they still give off a dim glow because of the heat trapped inside them. Over trillions of years, they cool to become black dwarfs, marking the end of their cosmic journey. Despite the eventual fate of celestial bodies like neutron stars cooling into black dwarfs, humanity has ample time to explore space before bidding farewell to the universe as evidenced by the recent discovery of TOI-715b, a super-Earth orbiting an M-dwarf, captivating astronomers worldwide. Exploring the depths of space with advanced observatories. In the vast canvas of the cosmos, this remarkable celestial discovery has captured the attention of astronomers and stargazers worldwide. Led by Georgina Dransfield from the University of Birmingham, an international team unveiled their findings in a January 2024 publication. The planet TOI 715b is located approximately 137 light years from us. Astronomers rely on light years to measure the immense distances in space because using meters or kilometers just isn't practical. Although light zooms through space at an incredible speed, the distances it covers are mind-bogglingly vast. To put this into perspective, it takes about 8.3 minutes for light to travel from the sun to the Earth. This means that when we observe the sun, we see it as it appeared 8.3 minutes ago. So if something were to suddenly change on the sun, like a brightness fluctuation, it would take 8.3 minutes for us on Earth to notice it. Now, let's consider our nearest star beyond the sun, Proxima Centauri, which sits approximately 4.2 light years away from us. When we gaze at Proxima Centauri in the night sky, the light we're seeing departed from the star a whopping 4.2 years ago. Despite the incredible speed of light, the vast expanse of our solar system means that when we peer into space, we're essentially peering back in time. It's as though we're viewing a snapshot of the universe's past, frozen in the light that travels across the cosmos to reach our eyes. The confirmation of TOI-715b involved utilizing new facilities such as the Gemini South and Loomis Observatories and the James Webb Space Telescope. The new adaptive optics system at the Gemini South Observatories, known as GEMS, employs five laser guide stars to implement a technique called multi-conjugate adaptive optics. 
this advanced technology provides unequaled resolution across a vast expanse of the sky, surpassing the capabilities of traditional adaptive optic systems. GEMS plays a crucial role in enhancing the performance of upcoming 30-meter and large telescopes, which are currently in the planning stages. Gemini Observatory is deeply committed to engaging students and the public in its host communities through an extensive education and outreach program. Events such as the annual Asteroid Chili Cook-Off and Hawaii's Journey Through the Universe bring the thrill of astronomical discoveries to people of all ages. Whether it's delving into the tumultuous cores of active galaxies, examining exoplanets orbiting distant stars, or exploring the diverse worlds within our solar system, Gemini continues to push the boundaries of exploration and share the wonders of the universe with the global community. The Gemini telescopes explore the universe by observing both the infrared or heat radiation and the optical light that we can see with our eyes. These telescopes boast massive reflectors, each about 8 meters or 27 feet across, which gather light using mirrors that are distinct from those found in other observatories. What sets Gemini apart is its mirrors, which are coated with a special layer of protective silver instead of the more common aluminum coating seen on most large telescopes. This unique feature gives Gemini an edge in observing the mid-infrared part of the spectrum, enabling it to conduct observations that no other ground-based telescope can achieve. Gemini Observatory is powered by a dedicated team of about 150 employees who work tirelessly each night. Their responsibilities range from conducting observations to maintaining scientific instruments and managing daily operations, covering everything from accounting to human resources. The observatory staff is drawn from local communities, as well as from Gemini's international partnership and beyond. Operations at Gemini are coordinated from its base facilities located in La Serena, Chile, and Hilo, Hawaii. Additionally, each of the Gemini partner countries maintains a national partner office to serve scientific users worldwide. Gemini operates in a mode called Q-Mode, where observations are conducted each night based on a pre-prioritized list designed to match the prevailing sky conditions. This allows Gemini to switch between different instruments, enabling a wide range of observations, from hunting for exoplanets to probing the origins of the universe. One of Gemini's strengths lies in its ability to observe time-critical events, such as sudden gamma-ray bursts or weather phenomena on other planets in our solar system. Often, there is only a brief window of opportunity to capture such events as they unfold in space. This capability makes Gemini a powerful tool for unraveling the mysteries of the cosmos, including the study of exoplanets and the observation of TOI 715b. The TOI 715b is approximately 1.55 times the size of Earth and falls within the habitable zone of its star, where conditions might be just right for life. Additionally, there's another potential planet in this system. It's about the size of Earth, and if scientists confirm its existence, it could be the tiniest planet found by TESS within the habitable zone of a star. TOI 715 is what we call a typical red dwarf star. Compared to our Sun, it's much smaller, about one-fourth of the Sun's mass and size. One of its planets, TOI 715b, orbits very close to the star, completing a full orbit in just 19 days. This proximity places TOI 715b in what scientists call the conservative habitable zone of the star exploring the boundaries of the habitable zone. To determine if a planet could support life, we look for those situated in the habitable zone of their star. Planets in this zone have the right conditions for life, like suitable temperatures. But how do we locate and define this zone? We calculate the habitable zone using the star's brightness, or luminosity, and its effect on temperature. This helps gauge which planets in a solar system might be habitable. For instance, Earth lies within our Sun's habitable zone, while Venus and Mars are just outside it. So if we were extraterrestrial explorers, we'd start with Earth, but wouldn't overlook Venus and Mars until we investigated them. Because red dwarfs emit less light than the Sun, planets like TOI 715b need to be closer to receive enough warmth for potential habitability. 
A recent study, published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, unveils this thrilling discovery. Identifying planets where liquid water might exist is tricky business, especially when it comes to the habitable zone. This zone, though commonly used, has blurry boundaries and can be a bit confusing. Factors like the type of star, the planet's reflective properties, its mass, and even how cloudy its atmosphere is, can all affect whether it's suitable for liquid water. But there's a more precise concept called the Conservative Habitable Zone, CHZ, introduced in a 2014 study by Koparapu and colleagues. This zone defines a range around a star where a rocky planet gets just the right amount of sunlight, between 0.42 and 0.842 times the energy Earth receives. Any rocky planet soaking up that much sunlight is considered to be in the CHZ no matter how near or far it is from its star. As astronomers continue to uncover more exoplanets, they're noticing patterns among them. One interesting finding is a gap in the population of small planets, particularly those with sizes between 1.5 and 2 times that of Earth. This gap, often referred to as the small planet radius gap or sub-Neptune radius gap, is also known by other names such as the Fulton Gap and the Photoevaporation Valley. Interestingly, TOI 715b, with a radius of 1.5 times that of Earth, falls right within this gap. The discovery of a super-Earth within the habitable zone of a star is always a cause for excitement. It sparks our curiosity about distant worlds and the potential for them to harbor life. Unlike planets like hot Jupiters, which are not hospitable to life due to their extreme conditions, super-Earths offer a glimmer of hope for the existence of liquid water and perhaps even life. This aspect adds to their allure and makes them particularly fascinating targets for exploration. However, this discovery holds significance beyond its potential for being habitable. It's highly unlikely that no planets exist within this radius gap. Planets likely begin their formation larger and then gradually lose mass, eventually ending up within this gap. Therefore, the Fulton Gap provides insights into the processes through which certain planets shed mass. Astronomers propose that planets within the gap initially form larger but undergo mass loss due to photoevaporation caused by their parent stars, leading to their reduction in size. This phenomenon is why the gap is also referred to as the photoevaporation valley. However, there remains considerable uncertainty surrounding this valley and the process of photoevaporation. Astronomers are eager to study planets within this gap to unravel more about these phenomena and deepen our understanding. The significance of the Radius Valley lies in its potential to offer insights into both planetary formation and subsequent evolution. Therefore, planets situated within this gap play a crucial role in advancing our knowledge of the mechanisms responsible for shaping it. There's some uncertainty regarding the existence of a gap in size around M-dwarfs. Instead of a gap in size, M-dwarfs may exhibit a gap in density. A recent study by Luque and Pala 2022 suggests that planets orbiting M-dwarfs may have a gap in density rather than size, separating two groups of planets, rocky and water worlds. Regardless of whether it's a gap in size or density, TOI 715b holds valuable insights about exoplanets, photoevaporation, and how exoplanets are distributed around red dwarfs. However, uncovering these insights requires further, in-depth observations. This is the second reason why this super-Earth is so captivating. Since the beginning of exoplanet discoveries, scientists have eagerly awaited the operational phase of the James Webb Space Telescope anticipating the wealth of information it will unveil. Finally, the age of the James Webb Space Telescope is upon us, marking a new era of thoroughly examining exoplanetary atmospheres. The JWST boasts the capability to analyze the spectra of exoplanet atmospheres and identify their components. However, despite its immense power, certain targets offer more favorable conditions for transmission spectroscopy than others. TOI 715b stands out as a top priority because of its proximity to its star. B 
Being in close orbit around a small red dwarf like TOI-715, this planet completes a full orbit every 19 days, causing frequent and deeper transits across the star's surface. This frequent occurrence of transits makes it easier for the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, to study the planet's atmosphere since it requires less observation time. In the realm of studying atmospheres through transmission spectroscopy, bright and nearby M dwarfs serve as optimal hosts for planets. This is because small, temperate planets like TOI 715b transit frequently, allowing for high-quality detections of atmospheric characteristics with minimal telescope usage. Could TOI 715b, the super-Earth, be a place where life could thrive? Without the advanced spectroscopic abilities of the JWST, we can only speculate for now. While it sits within the star's conservative habitable zone, that's not enough to conclude. Yet there are promising clues. TOI-715, the star hosting the planet, is a bit older than our sun, clocking in at around 6.6 .6 billion years. Interestingly, it exhibits minimal magnetic activity, which distinguishes it from younger M dwarfs. Unlike its younger counterparts, TOI-715 shows no significant flaring in the test light curves, suggesting a calmer stellar environment. This is crucial because red dwarfs are known for their intense flares, which could potentially harm any nearby planet. Furthermore, these flares can strip away planetary atmospheres, a phenomenon possibly linked to the photoevaporation valley observed in exoplanets. There's also a possibility of another planet orbiting TOI-715, currently labeled as TIC 271971130.02. If confirmed, it would mark the smallest habitable zone planet ever detected by TESS. However, more observations are necessary to verify its existence. The TOI-715 system presents an interesting subject for further investigation. While TOI-715BB patiently awaits its turn, the JWST is set to analyze its atmosphere eventually. Should the results hint at habitability, astronomers' excitement will undoubtedly soar. At the same time, such studies may shed light on the strange radius or density gap, which continues to puzzle scientists in their quest to understand exoplanets more comprehensively. The potential discovery of a new planet, TIC 271971130.02, orbiting TOI-715, could be TESS's smallest habitable zone find. Confirmation awaits further observations, but the system holds promise for unraveling more exoplanet mysteries, unveiling new frontiers in astrobiology. Scientists and researchers have always kept an open mind, because there was a possibility of discovering bio-life that was unlike anything seen before, even on Earth. Certain organisms had the weirdest features and survived in the most extreme conditions. These types of life forms could serve as models for the unusual life forms that might potentially have existed on other distant, habitable planets. Up until now, our search for extraterrestrial life had mainly focused on planets with close similarities to Earth. One might have wondered, what if we had looked at things from a different perspective? What if, instead of looking for signs of life as we knew it, we had sought something else, perhaps life as we didn't know it? Given the fact that we knew so little about our universe, it would not have been out of order to imagine that there may have been distinct extreme bio-life forms lurking deep in some of the planets we had labeled as uninhabitable. In the past, there were various harsh conditions like high radiation, excessive elements, high temperature or extreme weather, where certain species might have thrived or even found them suitable. A few years ago, astronomers discovered a new class of planets known as hot exoplanets that might have been able to support life. These planets were larger, hotter, and covered with oceans, providing a broader habitable zone compared to Earth. Some of these planets had atmospheric pressures reaching almost 200 degrees Celsius. These planets checked the boxes in terms of having a significant amount of water. However, given the atmospheric and planetary conditions, any type of bio-life that existed in these worlds would have been far different from what we knew. One fascinating planet among this new class of planets was K218b. Discovered in 2015, 
It was one of the numerous planets detected by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope. This telescope, named after astronomer Johannes Kepler, went on its mission in 2009 to search for Earth-sized planets orbiting stars in the nearby regions of space. Operating in a heliocentric orbit, Kepler gradually moved away from Earth while scanning the cosmos. Thanks to Kepler's observations, we learned that approximately 25% to 50% of the stars visible in our night sky may harbor small rocky planets similar in size to Earth. Moreover, Kepler identified several of these planets within the habitable zone of their parent stars. Among them stands K218b, located about 124 light years away from Earth, in the constellation Leo. It's akin to a mini Neptune orbiting a faint red dwarf star. Many scientists speculated that planets like K218b might be able to sustain life due to potential biomarker molecules. These biomarkers are traces of certain compounds left behind by organic processes and can be detected in soil, water samples, or the atmospheres of planets. Common biomarkers include methyl chloride and dimethyl sulfite. While some planets may possess elements like oxygen, methane, or hydrogen, others, like Earth, are primarily carbon-based. This implies that life forms on such planets with different elemental compositions might have entirely different structures from those on Earth. Planets like Kepler K2 and 18b are unique as they share Earth's biomarker, carbon. The James Webb Space Telescope detected carbon molecules, methane, and carbon dioxide on this planet, elevating its potential as a host for biolife. However, K2 18b is not the only intriguing planet under scrutiny. Another notable but controversial candidate is TRAPPIST 1b, discovered in 2016. Roughly 1.5 times larger than Earth, TRAPPIST 1b may also be suitable for life. According to NASA astrophysicist Thomas Green, it boasts a dense atmosphere that shields its surface from excessive heat or radiation. Nonetheless, its proximity to its star results in scorching daytime temperatures exceeding 200 Dio C. While this environment is uninhabitable to humans, it might be hospitable to other species. Fortunately, with advanced space telescopes like the James Webb, Gemini South, and Loomis observatories, we can now analyze the atmospheres of distant planets. The JWST's recent remarkable discoveries hint at even more fascinating findings awaiting us. Some experts even speculate the existence of superhabitable worlds, planets with conditions even more favorable for life than Earth. Though still a concept, superhabitable worlds would ideally be older, larger, warmer, and potentially more humid than Earth, offering a glimpse into the vast possibilities of life beyond our planet. And who knows, perhaps future observations with these cutting-edge instruments will shed light on even more remarkable discoveries. Like the intriguing Super-Earth, TOI-715b, recently unveiled by astronomers. What are your thoughts on the exciting discovery and the possibility of life outside Earth? Let us know your opinion in the comments below.